everybody, and welcome to Internal Narcissist Radio. Today is uh, in radio show number 11, and our special guest today is a master vocal coach and clinician, author, and singer. It's Robert Lunte. You know, we talked all week, and I didn't ask him how to pronounce his name, so he might crucify me later. It looks French to me, but we will um, laugh about uh, having such deep uh, and fun conversations and never um, getting to the part of how to pronounce his last name, even up until right before we just started the show. So please forgive me, Robert. Um, <laughs> Kelly Wright is checking in on a very interesting week, everybody. It, um, I picked up Grace again, uh, my guitar. She's my recording king. I just got her a year ago. I'm very um, moved by music. I've been around music my whole life. Um, music is everything. Uh, I think it's Dietschy that said, without music, uh, life would be meaningless. Um, I... Always have wanted to sing, so it's one of those things that I've always wanted to take vocal lessons. So as I was watching uh, my Facebook page a little while back, I, I saw a post go by, and it was uh, for uh, Robert's page and for his uh, his new uh, release of his vocal instructions called The Four Pillars, and I jumped on that. So that's we're going to have him on the show today, and we're going to talk, and I can't wait to get him on the show. I wish we would have recorded all of our conversations. They've been really uh, fun and lighthearted. I... Um, I wrote something, and I'm not going to read one of my regular blogs, but I wrote this, and um, it's called Perfect Pitch. So I'm going to read it, and, uh, and then we're going to play the first song uh, from Robert. It's called Souls of Silence. But right now, we'll start with Perfect Pitch. It says, My love for you is unconditional. It does not wax or wane with the draw of the moon. It does not hide when sunny days are inept. It is alive and bright on the inside, always pulsing in the hues of your own intention. In the whispers of your beating life force, an internal song from source allowing you to know that I'm always with you and we are one. A universal song of creation in the hum of your personal signature and key. So I ask, which key will you tune yourself to today? Which note will you use to unlock your day? The one outside that is not a perfect fit but gets us halfway through? Or the one that we were born with that gives access to the kingdom? I know it is hard sometimes to hear that perfect pitch inside of us, sometimes taking it for granted or because it's blocked by the fracture of fear. I know because I was tone deaf to my own reasoning for a long time while on this path that led me to the now. For most of my life, really. But song is a part of us and cannot leave, and we are in control of the returning of our heartstrings. Maestro of our own injunction to usher in the first new chord of the first brand new day. For nothing outside of us can complete us. We must complete ourselves. Then and only then can we connect to the wonder that is us and always has been. It is the place we must seek if we want to know our true path and gain the clarity and wisdom to resurrect in the gold. I wrote this when I was out in the middle of planning the show and um, had a couple pre-conversations with Robert. It came to me, the beginning of it, on a blog. I um, hope that it is um, resonating. I think it fits with the show perfectly today. You know, Soul, uh, Souls of Silence is an epic, um, I want to say ballad. Uh, it's a beautiful. It reminds me, um, when I listened to it, um, I, I actually was taken back to an Iron Maiden ballad or uh, epic song or a crocus a song that I, I have in the back of my head. And um, we're going we're gonna to start here with uh, Souls of Silence, and uh, we're ready for track one. Silence 
got caught. I got caught up in the middle too. I thought that was our cue. I know. <laughs> I, I know. It, it's still not over. <laughs> it's still going. It's still, I, it's still going. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. And um, you know what happened yeah, in that thanks. song for me is it took me back to welcome to the show, Robert. First of all. Yeah, thanks for having me. This is a lot of fun. Let's do it. I am um, I'm drawn to that song because it takes me back. I don't know if you want to go that far back with me, but there's like these epic songs by Iron Maiden, Still Life, and then there was one by <laughs> Crocus. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I was Crocus. just like, <laughs> I went, I took you back there, didn't I? <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, like Crocus is cool and stuff, but I, I wouldn't really identify with that too much. But Look, I mean, I was inspired a lot by um, metal singers of the 70s, 80s, and maybe a few folks in the 90s. Um, so, I guess so. Yeah, I mean, it has that flair and that, that vibe to it, I suppose. Well, we all connect that to our own kind of, thing, too. So. Oh, oh, what's that? I, we all, we're, all, we're all very subjective, so what I'm hearing has, might have nothing to do with what you were creating. <laughs> Well, well, well. Uh, Bruce Dickinson from Iron Maiden was a big inspiration for me when I was growing up, for sure. Oh, good. And, and as was uh, Rob Halford, Jeff Tate, Steve Perry, um, all those guys. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, you're hitting at something there, but it's important to note that kind of that heroic metal style of singing Epic. isn't my only isn't the only thing that. I do, and as an artist, we'll play some other songs, and it's not really the same vibe. Um, right, right. Well, we talked about it. Um, you know, you said there's a difference between being a singer and you as a voice coach. Well, for sure, for sure. Um, and that is yet another discussion, but um, absolutely, there are people that teach people how to train, to get stronger, more coordinated, to become better singers. They're called voice coaches. And then there are artists that are engaged in the art form known as singing that are singing. And that might sound all a little bit hokey, but it's important, particular to listeners and people that are just maybe interested in, in, in learning how to sing and, 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 and want to know more about what this is. One of the first things that you need to understand that they need to understand is that voice coaching or technique training, what I do for a living, isn't the same thing as singing. Now, they, yeah. there's some cross-pollination, of course. The kind of, um, they're related, of course, but, but they're two very different skill sets, and the general public don't really get that until they come to their first lesson with me. And then they right. <laughs> then they realize, oh, okay, okay, we're not going to hold a brush and kind of like you know think in the mirror here. Okay. Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. We're, no, we're going <laughs> to we're not going to just sing songs. We're it's going work. to work out. We're <laughs> going to train. Yeah. Yeah. So you said it's a uh, you know it's like a vocal workout. It's a, you're you're it's an athletic workout for your vocal cords. Well, I have a catchphrase I use sometimes in my marketing. Uh, we train vocal athletes. And not only does it sound cool, but it's absolutely true. And any great voice coach will agree with me on that statement. And that, and that hits at this element of naivete that the general market may have from time to time that they don't get that. If you have no experience or any reference to vocal technique training and what that is, most people don't, then you're just going to assume that a voice lesson would be singing songs. Right. The, yeah. The, and, 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 and it all boils down to, it's, it's kind of a fairly big story, but I know I've got to keep this simple and short. It boils down to, to um, a couple simple facts. One of them being that what I'm doing right now, the way the musculature in my larynx and vocal cords and the, the anatomy of the, phonations I'm making right now uh, um, for speech right. and the vowels, these language vowels I'm using right now are very different. They are radically different than the muscle movements and configuration of my larynx and cartilage and vocal folds and all and respiration and all that and the vowels when I'm singing. 
So a speaking voice and configurations are radically different than singing voice configurations. Right. A speaking voice is an old pickup truck. <laughs> right? it, it's an old pickup truck. It, it's a wonderful for what it does, but at the end, it's not much more than articulated eight-man grunting. Okay? <laughs> singing is a high-performance sports car. Right. Now, to get from this clunky, throaty speech mechanism that we all live with every day and turn that into a high-performance fighter jet, you need to train. And when I say train, I mean literally uh, reps, one, two, moving muscles, resistance training. And and that's where kind of the, the magic of the art form of the teaching comes in with my program, The Four Pillars of Singing, and myself and other great coaches, which is we put – people through vocal scales and workouts and onsets and different bowel modifications and strange abstract things at first that manipulate the respiratory system, the vocal full compression system, um, the, uh, the acoustics and performance of your singing and other elements so that people can get stronger and more coordinated for singing. And when that happens, of course, they then can bridge to passaggio, sing in their head voice, do distortion, do all the cool things that they want to do. Right, and and find their own voice. Find you know we talked about that. Everyone has a beautiful mm-hmm. voice if they're willing to do the work. Well, fundamentally, I'll, I'll just to be honest. Not everyone, but most, the majority. Right, you said eighty the twenty. Majority of people. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> um, and that's a, and that's an honest statement. Um, most people, the majority of of people out there, even if you don't give a rip about singing, fundamentally. Your vocal track, and when I say you, I'm not talking just specifically to you, Kelly. Mm-hmm. I am speaking to you, Kelly, but your audience. Yes. Your vocal track has its own unique, beautiful sound color. Yes. If we put the right balance of resonant energy, okay, respiration, and singing vowels, not language vowels, but singing vowels, into your particular unique vocal track at the right levels at the right balance levels. This is physics. Okay. It will whistle. It (laughs) will go, it'll amplify and it'll just go and, and make a beautiful sound like any wind instrument does. Right. So vocal training has a lot to do with balance, understanding, and then learning how to balance the physics of the acoustics of singing. Right. Big part of it. Yeah. You know, I, I don't know why this just came to me, but I was thinking when I took my diving classes, we had to learn to breathe and take oxygen underwater um, without the respirator in our mouth and grab that air back in, you know, and, and, and that was, you know, and I, I think of the different ways that we had to use our mouth and our throat to grab and nose to grab the air without taking in water. And it's just, it's like anything in life. If, if you work really hard, you'll be able to, to master it. And um, I love the fact that uh-huh. you've got, you've got this uh, program out here. We'll, um, we're gonna. Um, I'd love to listen to another one of your songs, but um, yeah. and then come back and talk some more about it because they're just okay. beautiful. Um, so stay with Thank us. And, uh, we're gonna play. Di- we're gonna play behind averted eyes. And when you come back, we'll talk a little bit about that song. Does that sound good? Yeah, I love that song. That's Thanks. my favorite song that I do for me. Okay, perfect. <laughs> well, then, well, I like yeah, that. <laughs> okay, we're gonna listen to behind averted eyes. Cool.
And that was a beautiful song, Behind Diverted Eyes. I'm just thankful today that uh, we thankful that we had to have you on the show and I invited you on the show to talk about your, you know, your, your PDX training for vocalists, but it happened to be in good time, <laughs> but it happened to be in perfect timing. You were releasing some of your own works that you've done, some private things that are important to you. So I got, we got to play your music today too. It's nice. I've done, I've done a fair share of interviews that are similar to this, but I got to hand it to you. This is the first one where it's really like, no, we're going to dig in and we're going to listen to the singing too. And I think that's kind of cool because, well, you know, that's the end game, I suppose. Yeah. And, um, and, and it, the timing is, 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 um, good because these songs, I've been working on them for about six months. Um, and what we're hearing, they're not completed entirely yet. They still need to be mastered, but they're almost done. And then I'll release an EP. Um, in a few weeks or so. And, um, yeah, I'm really happy to get out there and show people that, you know, I, I can eat my own dog food a little bit and carry a <laughs> tune. Yeah. Well, and, and you have such a beautiful voice, and it's so deep and full, and I love that. Um, Thank you. It, it's just gorgeous. And I, when I first um, found you, you know, you online, I went to go look at some of your videos, and I thought, "Wow, you really, its amazing <laughs> your voice." So it's 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 good that your proof's in the pudding. Um, uh, you know, getting back to when you were talking about well, the you. the singing, you're welcome. <laughs> when you're getting back to the singing vowels, I love how you separate the from the normal vowels and the singing vowels. Because I know we mm-hmm. talked, we talked about how I th- I think that most people probably think um, they're either born a singer or not. You you know you listen to the radio and you figure those people were born singers, or you try to sing when you're little and someone says you know to stop yeah. or whatever. You don't get encouraged, so you just kind of put that dream mm-hmm. or that feeling of joy aside. And so I kind of allude that to what we think mm-hmm. and what we say, because sometimes we think things and we don't say things. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, this this um, comprehensive vocal training program I put my my heart and soul, blood and tears into you for the last six years um, right. is called the four called the four pillars of singing. It's a six hundred sixteen page book with seven gigabytes of video lectures, demonstrations, workouts, routines, uh, uh, audio files to train with, notation, you name it. I have not left one damn thing out of this product. It <laughs> is the P90X for singers. I love it when you say the so, P90X for singers because that, I mean, that tells me that people could do this at home, and that's what you've built it to do. It's, it is a really great metaphor, not just trying to be cheeky. Um, uh, it's... It, and, and, I, and I've recently been gravitating towards that metaphor because just in the last two years, after I've laid out all the science of the singing and then defined my methodology in the singing at the end and kind of what happened in the last 18 months was, oh, let's teach people how to train. So the, fi- the last 150 pages of this entire training system is solely focused on teaching the student how to practice, how to train. Right. And, 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 and this is a really obvious thing, but it is surprisingly missing in a lot of <laughs> other home study vocal training programs. Ah. And, and, and I, I, have a, I, I have a lot of these other programs, and they're great. I've been inspired by uh, some of my colleagues are you know, talented, wonderful teachers, and we all share great ideas together. But some of them are just like, okay, I've read the beautiful book. I get your methodology. It's all great, but... Now what do I do? How do I train? Uh, I don't have a mic in my hand. I'm ready to practice. Yeah. And, it, and if you don't have content, if you don't have piano skills and videos and instructions in the book to say, okay, on exercise number 10, this is what you've got to do, and here's the thing to look out for, and good luck and go. If you don't have that, then you're, it's, you're really missing out as a student okay. of vocal training. So I have solve that problem. Four Pillars of Singing has the, um, just completely detailed training routines like a P90X. So if you get this system and you live in a forest in Sweden, okay, and you don't have access to, you don't live in LA, you don't live in Seattle, you don't have access to the best coaches in the world or wherever that may be, you don't live in London, and and you've got a big dream and you've got a big heart and you have okay, $200 in your pocket, work with me. 
get my program. And it looks like a sales pitch, but I'm telling you, this thing is not cheap. This is not a half-assed operation. I've been working on this thing for six years, and I am, I am committed to giving the world the best home study contemporary vocal training program ever. And I think at this stage of this product's development, it's in its fourth edition, I've actually achieved that. And some kid, 16 years old, that might not have access to a great coach living in a fort in Sweden can do it. Wow. If I, that's he reads what I love. that book, mm-hmm, he'll get it's, it done. Right. It's one package. Like I was looking on your online too. You have nine discs of DVD high audio and one high intensity disc. So you basically got everything they need here to to find their own voice. You know, I wrote this today. It said, I believe we There's all no more need- discs. Yeah, oh, no more There's discs? no more discs. Sorry, okay. I got to interrupt you on that. Okay. Um, we're not doing this old school disc break. That's, that's, that's so 90s. That's so 90s. <laughs> oh, that's I'm not, no, we're not doing – no, my clients, be, you're going to log into a website that is mobile-friendly on every device, and it's full-blown coursework. Oh, I'm glad you Everything. corrected me on that because we definitely want to show yeah. the P90X up-to-date version. I'm going to use you, so I, you know, I, I, I definitely plan on doing that. It's been a dream of mine to learn how to sing. I was going to read something I wrote, but then I just noticed here that you were a protege to the late Maestro David Kyle. I know him. He lived out in West Seattle on Alki, and I yeah, didn't know, I, I, didn't know, I changed was, Maestro Kyle for twelve years, and he's met on a lot of famous students. Oh, he's yeah, wonderful. Yeah. He's yeah. wonderful. I know him from living down on Alki Beach in Seattle, Washington, and a friend of mine was seeing him, yeah. and I never realized he trained, oh, Ann Wilson, too. Okay, I just noticed that on your page, but anyways, <laughs> that is um, a little feather in the hat for me. I connect to him and to home through that. I think you yeah. you, you remember that place down there on Alki. It, yeah, it's still there. It's still is there. It? Somebody bought it and built another story on it, but it's it, it's still there. There's a picture of the old Maestro Kyle house in my book. Um, in fact, uh, as you mentioned it, in this book, from the Four Pillars of Singing, towards the back, there is an essay from Maestro David Kyle. Oh. There's a little Maestro Kyle tribute in my book, which is, I guess, maybe uh, 10 or 15 pages. And um, uh, a few years back, one of my students, who was also a custom, came into a lesson with me and put and handed me a document that was old, crinkled, notebook paper looked like coffee had been spilt on it and this and that but what it was was about a 20 year old handwritten thing from david kyle 20 pages of him just pontificating and going off on vocal technique with metaphors and all the maestro kyleisms and and i just thought i gotta put that in my book Oh, so um, there's a little Kyle tribute in the book, and it's really cool. People really like that when they read it. Well, I'm glad we got to give him a little shout out here. I didn't know that. I, I you know, we deal in mental mm-hmm. health, and I work with the people in recovery. And so when I heard that, I thought, you know, we never know when someone's in pain because sometimes we mask our pain and uh, behind averted mm-hmm. eyes. You know what I mean? So, and then I thought, you know, yeah. it, it, and then there, I thought, you know, what, and the reason we do this is because sometimes we're not shining in our own authentic voice, you know, which brings us to, to a vocal, you know, instruction and learning to sing. This is something I think that people, if they mm-hmm. learn to find their own voice, literally, and start and can train, it gives them something to participate in life in, to be a participant mm-hmm. in life and, and know that everyone has a, has a voice to find. I wrote this today that says, I've I believe we all need to find our own voice. It not, it not only lies in our um, constructing our truth, but using our body, example, our vocal cords, to sing the truth and create the world around us, using the colors of our life as the real moments. And I think that this is an option and a gift that would be great for anybody out there, for young children or people who aren't sure what they want to do, because if you don't want to play football or you can't play an instrument, you have one built in, in, in you were born with. <laughs> That's what I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, in, in, indeed, I was just gonna. I was just gonna say. I'm kind of following you up on this. This says. Um, um, I lost that guy. Yes, this is the earlier today. Um, from that song, the hook to end the tale. I rose. I leaned back, and I fell through a gateway. I stand in a garden, alone, naked, and frail. Yes. So that can be 
more serious issues that we're talking about, and I'll let it be that. But it can also be your point, Kelly. It can also be somebody who's at the end of the rope, somebody that needs to feel alive again, somebody that wants something to be, they want to be good at something, somebody that has a dream, um, somebody just going through a midlife crisis, perhaps, um, somebody that believes in themselves but nobody ever believed in them before. Vocal training is a path you can take. Yes, yes. And, yeah, it's just really beautiful that way. A lot of my students, you know, they're not going to be super stars or whatever. Maybe they will be. But even if they aren't, we don't care so much because just the getting after something, being dedicated to something and getting good at it. And in particular with singing, when you get really good at the vowels and resonating, you start getting strong. When your voice really, really does begin to transform into a wind instrument, you can feel the formant energy. You can feel the resonant energy physically in your body. And I'm not done. This isn't just like some kind of new age thing. I mean, you can feel it like a pressure, and it look how low in the back of your head on certain vowels. Yeah. And then I when was... you modify to other vowels, you can feel the resonant moving forward to the palate and you can feel it shifting around. And it's 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 enjoyable actually. It's it's a pleasant feeling. And, and it um, feels powerful because you you don't think of all the places you could have control in just that one area. I was watching one of your videos and you were showing uh, you know, where the vowels come up and where they move when you're yeah. pushing it. That's Yeah, you're right. Yeah, that that was a video that was explaining the TVS acoustic modes, which is part of the methodology, acoustic modes, families or groups of singing vowels, not speech vowels, singing groups vowels. of singing vowels that share resonant energy characteristics. Yeah. And therefore sound color characteristics. That gives me Some such singing, a- well, yeah. I'm, so, I'm sorry to interrupt, but that gives me so okay. such. Um, I, I get excited because I didn't realize that there's a difference. So I'm trying to sing with mm-hmm. my speaking vowels, and no wonder it doesn't feel right all, all the, the whole time. I'll, it'll sound good to me part of the time, but then the other time, mm-hmm. I'm like, where'd it go? <laughs> you nailed it. You nailed it, Kelly. You nailed it. And I, in this book, I, I, forgot, I, I failed to point out earlier, what I was leading to say is at the beginning of the book, about 100 pages is myth-busting. Myth-busting, myth busting yes. about singing and stuff. And so that whole idea about some people are born to be singers and others are not, that's like the first one. That's actually, I, I, I explain all of that. And, and then another one of the myths are what you just said. And that is um, when we hear our heroes singing and they're singing really great, we hear anybody singing really great, we just... We, the general public, we just assume yeah. that that is happening through the physical and acoustic configuration of speech mode. And it's not. <laughs> yeah. It's not. <laughs> and, and so and that's what's kind of the point I was making earlier. And you buy the book and you take some lessons and you suddenly realize, oh, my God, I had no idea. This yeah. is a, this is. I thought we were just going to, like, sing okay. songs and he was going to sh- give me some free secret tips. <laughs> and I was going to learn how to, you know, sing like, like Jeff Tate in my seat, in my speaking voice. No, right. it doesn't work that way. No. Yeah. I love that. Like Jeff Tate in my speaking voice. Yeah. There's a whole dichotomy. Like it's two different realms. First of all, you're not, you're who you are, who you came to be. And second of all, there's your speaking voice and your singing voice, which are, they're to, and we think we've all, if you don't know any better, you've thought, you've always thought they were one as you're growing up. It was one path. It's the, it's the physiology <laughs> inside, of course, is all the same system, but the way it tilts, the way it contracts, the way it squeezes, the way it flexes, the way the tongue and palate articulates the form vowels are all radically different when you're singing well. Yeah, definitely, definitely. I'd like to play one more song. Um, we're getting down to our time here, and um, I, right. I know we don't have time for both. Which one would you like to play? Oh, uh, what are our nocturnal? I, I was going to play Nocturne or This Life. <laughs> we'll, okay. play, we'll play Nocturne. Yeah, play Nocturne. It's um, it doesn't rock well, out as much, but I really like it. I think it's tell great. us a little bit Let's about it. Oh, uh, about Nocturne? Yeah. Okay, it's got a good story. I was in a band about. 15 years ago, <laughs> and it was a great band, and like 
most fans, you know, it it it, it crapped out for reasons I, we don't have time to get into. <laughs> but there were really good songs in that band, and one of the most beautiful songs was this song called Nocturne. So I was digging through old files and old hard drives and things, and I found this this old song Nocturne, and I gave it to my um, songwriting producer friend that I work on with uh, with songs, um, Zach um, uh, Weedle. And I said, I said, update this sucker, make this thing sound killer. And he did it. And he handed me back a new nocturne 20 years later. <laughs> and mind you, I'm 20 years more mature, 20 years better singer. And then I took it back to the same studio and the same engineer that recorded it 20 years ago and said, listen to this. And he looked at me, he's draw, draw, and goes, oh, my God, I love this song. I love this song. And I said, we're going to do it again. And we knocked it out of the park. So this is the new version of Nocturne, the uh, Nocturne 2015. I like Nocturne 2015. All right, we're going to listen right now. <laughs> Stay with us. All right. Okay. Good. Good. Be my shelf for you 
I could see why you love that song. That's absolutely beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know, I love that I just, song. It's, I like, oh my that is like the singer, that's the singy singer song, you know? If you're it's, a singer, sing, if you're like a singer, that's the singer's singing song. I <laughs> love it, I love it. I love to have you on the show today. We could probably talk for a long time, and I know it's getting yeah. close to the end of the show. So I wanted to say, is there anything that you would, what could you say to someone out there who, you know, is uh, wanting to vocal train and let them know mm-hmm. how to find you and... Yeah. Okay. Well, um, I'll, 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 I'll say this just about everyone, not everyone, but just about everyone, 80, 90% of the population can learn to sing and learn to sing. Great. It's just Yay. a sport. You got to strengthen. So, so believe in that. If you got a big heart and you got a good program and a good coach, you can do it. Of course you got to practice as well. My program yeah. is the four pillars of singing. Um, if you go online to Google and type in the four pillars of singing, you'll get like 20 pages of videos and different things about it and reviews and what have you. The program's been sold in over 90 countries around the world. And in six years, I have a hundred percent score, five star reviews from anyone that's ever bothered to invest in this training program and bothered to give me a review. It's been a five star review. Awesome. Right. So awesome. we're going to get the job done, and I would look forward to helping people um, get stronger and more coordinated for singing. Yeah, well, I'm going to be one of those students. I, uh, it's not like a hidden desire. This has been something that's been in me my whole life. I remember when I, Mike, I tried out for contiques in seventh grade, and I didn't get, I didn't make the cut, and I went home and got on my knees and cried to God, how come oh. I couldn't sing? Yeah, I was so devastated. And I've talked about this on the show off and on, and all my friends know it that I want, that I've always wanted to learn how to, you know, to take vocal lessons. So it's just I'm spirit led. The time is right. I saw you. We have you on the show. I'm I'm going to definitely do this and I live out loud. So I'll be, um, when I, I told you when I, uh, don't go to school this summer, uh, I'm going to take classes with you and then I'll be able to let, yeah. uh, kind of track some of that for some of the followers and people out there too, to see how it works. Cause I will show them the before and after I'm not afraid. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Well, let's do that. Um, I'll send you a copy of it, uh, later today as well, Kelly. So you're taking care of, it. and as, uh, um, thank you for allowing me to be on your cool show. Wow, thank you. Thank you so much. I'm totally excited and I can't wait. So we're, de- we're definitely going to do this. I want everybody to know that you can go to thevocaliststudio.com. It's uh, thevocaliststudio.com. You can find everything that you need to know about Robert there, the, uh, the four pillars of singing. There's a contact number there if you're um, overseas or if you're, um, it's an 800 phone number. You could call him at 800-269-9040. We thank you so much for being on the show today and I look forward to talking to you again mm-hmm. soon. You too, Kelly. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. Thanks. You're listening to Internal Narcissist with Kelly J. Wright, only on L.A. Talk Radio.